Welcome back! So now that you have your tracking data recorded, it's time to build a character to apply it to. This is where things get a bit complicated. We're going to start by building a reusable template that you can use as the basis for any Connect controlled puppet. If you want to skip this section and download your own version of the template to start with, go for it. But I think knowing how it all works actually makes rigging easier. Start by creating a new comp. Let's call it Puppet Template. It has to match the dimensions and frame rate of the Kinect, so 640 by 480, 24 frames per second. Don't worry, you'll still be able to composite your puppet in HD later on. I've added a reference image to help explain what's going on here. The Kinect tracking pins are numbered 1 to 15, starting with the left foot and ending with the head. Now the first thing we're going to do is set up a layer that will hold the tracking data. Create a null or a new solid and label it source. This also needs to be 640 by 480, so resize it. And then set it so that the position keyframe is 0, 0, so it fits in the top corner and everything matches up. Now select the Puppet tool and add 15 points to this layer in roughly the shape of the Connect source data. They don't need to be perfect, but you can use the reference image as a template if you want. Now you aren't going to be animating this layer directly. These pins are where you're going to paste your tracking data so the puppet pieces can access it. That is, you're going to use them as a source of information to control another set of pins on different layers. It's good to have a sample track to test your rig with. To add your mocap data, open up its text file, copy the whole file, then select all the pins, and hit paste. Connect tracking data can be very choppy, so we need to smooth it out or all of our characters will look as if they've had far too much coffee. After Effects actually has a non-destructive smoothing function built into the program, but it's only accessible as an expression. I've been using this software for more than a decade now and I had no idea it was there, so I need to thank Roland Kalenberg on Creative Cow for pointing me in the right direction on this, as it's what really makes this process workable. So let's smooth things out a bit. Head down to the timeline and hit U to show all keyframes if you don't already have them showing. Hold Alt and click the stopwatch to create an expression. It defaults to self-referencing, so that snippet of script just means use these keyframes here to control this point. You're not going to delete that bit, just add a little piece of code on the end that will make the connect data play nice. Type dot smooth open parentheses 0.5 comma 15 close parentheses. You have to do this for all 15 points, but you only have to do it once. You can take a look at the smoothed out path by clicking Show Post Expression Graph, then switching to the Graph Editor. You can really see the difference it makes. The smooth method works by averaging out the motion over time. The first number is the amount of time averaged, 0.5 means half a second, and the second value is the number of samples over that time. Make sure it's an odd number so that the frame you're looking at gets factored in. The bigger the number, the smoother the motion, but it may slow down your machine, and if you average things too much, you'll start to get into creepy mocap jello territory. I find 0.5 and 15 work pretty well for me, but you can adjust the numbers to suit your own designs. Now, sometimes the data comes in with left and right inverted. The next thing we're going to build gives us a quick method of flipping the point sources, so that when that happens, you just have to check a box instead of rewriting all your expressions. Create a new layer, and call it Invert Pins. 
add a checkbox expression control. That's effect expression controls checkbox control. You can rename that if you want. I'm calling mine invert pins. We're going to write conditional expressions that refer to it. If it's checked, they'll get the tracking data from one side, and if it's unchecked, they'll get it from the other. The next step is to create the control layers to the different body parts. You could just have all the expressions on one layer, but separating them gives you a little flexibility and makes it easier to find the body part you're looking for when you're connecting the pins on your rig to the controls. Start by creating another null. Set the anchor point to zero by selecting the layer, pressing A and typing zero, and do the same for position by typing P. Make sure it's 640 by 480. If you need to shift a whole arm or leg over once you have things rigged, you'll be able to do it by moving these layers around. Let's start with the left leg. Rename the layer left leg. Now create an expression point control, effect expression controls point control, and call it left ankle. The next bit is easier if you hit U to show all the points on your source layer so you can grab them with the pick whip. Enable expressions and clear out the default one. Now it's time for that conditional expression I mentioned earlier. We're setting this layer up to change its content based on the invert pins checkbox. Here's how to add the expression. Type if, open parentheses, pick whip the invert pins checkbox control, equals equals false, close parentheses, do an open curly bracket, type from world, now pick whip the position of the first pin, which is the left ankle, and that's going to convert its coordinates to world layer space. Then type close curly brackets, else, open curly brackets, from world, and now pick with the position of pin 4, which is the right ankle's position. And close parentheses, and then close the curly brackets. When you rig your puppet layers, your character's left ankle is going to connect to this layer. Now let's set up the rest of the body parts. Here's where that skeletal diagram comes in really handy. Since you already have the basic expression format, all you have to do to set up the rest of the arm and leg controls is change the pin numbers. Duplicate the left ankle expression point control by selecting it in the effects palette and pressing Ctrl or Command D. Rename it left knee. If you had 1 and 4, now you need points 2 and 5. Do that again for left hip. And this time, change the numbers to 3 and 6. Then, duplicate the whole left leg layer and rename it right leg. Press EE to show all expressions. Rename them to right ankle, right knee, and right hip. And swap the numbers around for each of them. 1 and 4 becomes 4 and 1. Two and five becomes five and two.
And 3 and 6 becomes 6 and 3. That's both legs set up. Now it's time for the arms. Duplicate the left leg layer again, and this time call it left arm. Rename the controls to left wrist. Left elbow. And left shoulder. And again, reverse the numbers. For the wrist, the pins are 7 and 10. For the elbow, 8 and 11. And for the shoulders, 9 and 12. Duplicate the left arm layer and rename it to right arm. Rename the controls right wrist, right elbow, and right shoulder. And reverse the numbers for the opposite side of the body. So now you have all four limbs. Time for the waist, neck, and head. These don't flip left and right like the arms and legs, so it's going to work a little differently. So duplicate one of the other layers and rename it to spine. And this time, just delete the point controls. and create a new point control. Call this one waist. Uh, this was actually a little easier. Type from world and then pick, pick whip the position of pin 13. That's the waist. And then type the closed parentheses. All this does is grab the waist point's location and change the numbers to coordinates other layers can understand. Next, duplicate the waist point control, rename it neck, and change the pin number to 14. Duplicate it again. Make this one head. And change 14 to 15. I like to color code the control layers, green for the left arm and leg, and red for right, with a purple layer for the spine and head. But you now have a reusable puppet template. It's a good time to save. In the next part, we're finally going to connect an actual puppet to this.